Good afternoon and welcome to Rod Watton Field in Elliott and CTV 30's coverage of Thornton Academy High School football. Hello everybody, I'm Jay Harper along with Mark Paquette as we get set for 2-1 Thornton Academy taking on 2-1 Marshwood. Of course, these two teams going a bit in opposite directions. Thornton, the embarrassing loss in week number one and then two very impressive wins back to back and Marshwood, the opposite. The two wins coming out of the gates looking very strong and then the upset here on their homecoming against Sanford. But you look at the two losses that both these teams have occurred and you have to say, Noble and Sanford are two very improved teams and they're nothing to be ashamed about now the way they played against the rest of the league. But both teams now trying to continue to get that respect back. I was just walking by the Marshwood coaches and they're all saying time to get that respect back. Right now, earn the respect. They lost a lot last week with that loss. Thorn Academy certainly wanted to do that after Noble. They're trying to race that memory. They've done it, but today's the test. These are two teams that are very good. Both like to run the football, and I think whoever does it more successfully today might come out the victors. Well, Jay, isn't it interesting how every week we seem to say the same thing? Line of scrimmage, and this afternoon with a big Marshwood Hawk football team, the key is whether or not Thornton Academy is going to be able to control the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. Last week in the loss to Sanford, I think Marshwood got away from what they do best, and that's running the football behind that big line. I expect to see them do that again this afternoon. They don't really want to have to throw the football to win the game. We talked about Marshwood. They have great size, but they're also very young. They have a lot of sophomores and juniors throughout their lineup. And, of course, the loss of their quarterback to start the season, Scott Orlando, a very talented player. They've had to go with the backup, the Newland kid. He's done a decent job at QB from the tutelage from Orlando. He's been helping him out, getting him game ready week to week. And Thorn Academy will like to test the young quarterback. Well, you have to put pressure. Uh, that's no, no secret. You need that every week. I think what you're going to see him doing and be very happy to do is just give the ball to the fullback and halfback and see if they can open up some holes in that Thorn Academy defense. Of course, thus far this year, we know the Trojan defense has been simply outstanding. They really have. And on the offensive side, Thorn Academy, with a running game last week, amassing over 300 yards, True and Thompson just brilliant in the victory, and of course the offensive line. You would think Thornton will come out and run the football first, and if they're shut down, then look to pass. Chris Duranzo has to be feeling a lot better after his performance last week, just steady at handing the ball off, not asked to do a lot, but that has to build a young quarterback, and of course he's not that young, but it has to build a quarterback's confidence. It, it certainly does. Duranzo needs to be able to throw the ball, occasionally just to be able to keep that defense on their toes and I think the real key this afternoon is whether the backs can get through those holes quickly because Marshwood as we said is extremely big and if the hole is there the backs have to get through it quickly before they can get that penetration and surge into the Thornton backfield. And Thornton might look to throw the football a little bit this week because Sanford did burn Marshwood twice deep last week for touchdowns and Duranzo really you would think his confidence is there and this might be the day that he airs it out on top and Chris Mercia certainly has yet to really find his groove at the receiving department. He had two touchdowns last week so it should be an interesting matchup to say the least two and one Marshwood against two and one Thorn Academy we'll take a break back with our opening kickoff right after this <laughs> Welcome back to Rod Watton Field in Elliott and CTV 30's coverage of Thornton Academy football. The Golden Trojans taking on the Marshwood Hawks here this afternoon on a overcast afternoon, but the weather very cooperative in far as temperature goes in the mid 60s today with a bit of a breeze blowing from left to right. And Mark, you look at these two teams, both teams like to run the football and both teams looking for that respect. Of course, Marshwood with that loss last week, they're a fired up football team and ready to go here today. Should be a real exciting afternoon of high school football. Really, both teams looking uh, halfway through the season to stay over 500. Uh, the victor this afternoon is going to go to 3-1 and one with the loser at 2-2. Two and two. And really, you look ahead of Thornton Academy's uh, opponents down the road with Lewiston, Sanford, Massabesic going into the Bitterford game, that last game of the year. A big victory this afternoon, and uh, they could very well go into that game with just one defeat. 
Back deep to receive the Golden Trojans, Chris Mercier. On his left is Booten. On the right, Nathan Demers. And I don't know what team doesn't win the toss now in high school football and defer. Marshwood won the toss. They deferred. The Trojans will start with the football in their way. Gold and white uniforms. Kicking off for the Hawks is J.T. Simmons. High end ran kick and way away from Chris Mercier. Let's it go into the end zone for a touchback. And high school football, once it crosses the goal line, it is automatically a touchback and cannot be taken out. So a booming foot displayed by Simmons. The Golden Trojans will start from their own 20-yard line. Gaining a little advantage with having the wind at his back. Most of Class A action last night, so a large coaching contingent from around the state. Some surprising scores once again last night. Chris Durantso brings him out in the I formation. Soroyce comes to the near side. Mercia split way to the far side of the field. And they go straight ahead with Ryan True. True almost had some room to roam, couldn't break free. Busting in there, making the tackle. Number 66, Brian Van Sickle. A very crowded booth here at Rod Watton Fields. Every level getting over jammed, except maybe that top level. Up in the crow's nest. Well, that's the VIP section. Exactly. And we aren't VIPers. Second down and seven. Trojans come out with a double slot formation. Andrew Tripp splits to the near side of the field. Mercier gets the handoff after going in motion. He'll pick up a couple. That'll bring up a third down and five. Big series here right off the bat. Momentum huge here in the early going. Both teams trying to establish themselves. Thornton has been performing outstanding in all special teams aspects, except maybe in their punting game. Booten has yet to really get himself settled in back there. And they may be forced to punt early into a pretty stiff breeze. That's why it's important on this drive, Jay, for them to pick up a couple of first downs so they can win the battle of field position. Double slot, Durantso will throw, running out, got room, fires out the flat, Ryan True wide open, makes the catch and he'll have the first down. And great call right there by Thorne Academy and Durantso after wheeling backwards, going against the motion of sorts, he had plenty of time back there. I think everyone thought he was gonna roll left and came to the near side of the field at all kinds of time and Ryan True coming out of his slot position wide open. And he does a good job of maintaining his patience and allowing True to drag across the field and get open coming over the middle. Big first down for the Trojans. The ball out to the 38 yard line. Pick up of 13 on that play. True in motion this time, he'll get it. True trying to break a tackle and Van Sickle once again grabbing and pulling Ryan True down. True a little bit under the weather. We were told before the game that he's got bronchitis, taking medication, so he could be slowed a little bit today. Of course, the Chargers are no shortage of backs in that backfield. That'll bring up a second down and 10 now. We may see more of LeBrec as the season, as the afternoon wears on, Jay. Double slot again. Pitch goes to Mercier. Mercier trying to read the blocks, cuts up inside. He'll only get a couple. So another big third down play here. This one will be about third and seven. Ball just over the 40 yard line. Mercier trying to read the lead block of Thompson. But Marshall defender does a good job of neutralizing that block and gets lots of help from the inside. Durantso had plenty of time on his first passing attempt as he rolled to the right. This time, Eric Doyon comes to the near side of the field. He's the lone wideout. Coming with a blitz, Durantso seeming to have enough time, fires out looking for Doyon and falls incomplete. Doyon had some room out there. Coverage provided by number 30, Justin Rio. Doyon didn't really pull off his pattern until the ball was already in the air, and I believe he was supposed to hook perhaps about five yards beyond that first down marker and then hook it. That's where Durantso threw the ball. And plenty of room out there, Jay. 
And again, Duranzo had time, so offensive line performing well. Fourth down and a punting situation. Booten stands at his own 28-yard line. High snap. Some pressure coming in. Again, Booten just fluffs one off the side of his foot. And Mercy will down it at the 35-yard line. 25-yard punt for Dave Booten, the senior. And Marshall will start with their first offensive possession. Leading the Hawks at the quarterback position is John Newland. Newland, a 5'11", 150 junior. In the backfield, the big fullback, Andy Wright. He wears number 15. He's 6'1", 250. And then in the backfield, they also have 32 Whalen and number 19, Luke Hallway. The Hawks come with a lot of motion, a lot of fakes. They'll give it to the second and third back through. Pass on first down, fired out, and getting up to block it is Jason Grantham. Somewhat of a surprise. Marshwood passing on first down. We expected them to come out here and grind the ball on the ground. Perhaps what, that's what they're thinking, trying to catch Thornton Academy, Academy off guard. 8.36 to play, first quarter. No score between Thornton Academy and Marshwood. Kinch comes to the near side of the field. Handoff on a counter, it's right. Stood up at the line of scrimmage and the Trojans come in gang tackling. That's what you do to a big back. A lot of bodies on him and really no place for him to go. Once he gets that 250 pounds going in the right direction, he's gonna be tough to bring down. Scott Tricartin, number 79, in defensively, and he got down low, made the initial stick, and then the linebacking core came in to clean up. So Tricartin makes a nice play on second down. He comes off the field. So the Trojans now have the Hawks in a third down and long. Hanscom comes to the near side of the field. Newland setting up a screen. Wide open over the middle. Trojans will have to make a key tackle here and see where they spot him. It's going to be very, very close. Looks like he got to the 45, and that should be a first down for the Hawks. Oh, horrible spot there, though. He bounced before the 45-yard line, and the official just put it down where he came up after the bounce. That should have been very close. Easy to see from high above is that screen down on the field, not always easy to recognize. Well, every aspect of the game is easy from up here. First down and 10. Hand off to Whalen. Whalen breaks off the right side. It's a nice gain on first down. He'll pick up nearly seven yards out across midfield into Thorn Academy territory. Hallway in slot left formation, split backfield. Hand off to right, the big fullback. He'll come up just short. It'll be third down and a long one. You look to the right side of the line for the Hawks. The tackle weighs 300, 205 for the right side guard. A lot of weight being pushed on that side. Let's see if they go over the right side once again. Fake, second man through, it's Whalen. And a nice tackle out there by Farron and Allen. And a good fake, that's what Marshwood loves to do. They come with a big fullback, they'll fake the handoff, and then coming right off him, and actually one hole over will be the tailback, the second back through. And they don't always run it out of the eye. They run it out of a split, it's just a hesitation, the first back and then the second back. And the Hawks have been very successful going back some eight years now in Western A. Looking up top, downfield, the ball way overthrown as Newland was looking for Hanscom running a flag pattern over the middle. Uh, 
Amazing. They might think about changing their, their mascot name here. The Hornet's Nest. <laughs> Second down and 10 with 5.51 to go in the first quarter. Hawks on their opening possession after Thorn Academy picked up one first down and then were forced to punt. Counter back the other way, Newland. Nice job by Brian Thompson. And that's something else they'll, the Hawks will do, Jay, is fake to the fullback one way and then counter with the halfback coming in the opposite direction. Thompson doing a nice job that time, stepping up in the hole. It's a great play and it takes a very quick and talented quarterback to execute and that's all execution. The quarterback able to do that can really make a team much better. Not the easiest thing to do. Third down and nine. The ball at the 40-yard line of the Golden Trojans. Counter, the ball comes out, up in the air. And let's see who got it. I believe the Golden Trojans have it. Trevor Topham. I believe it was Travis Topham who got on it for the Golden Trojans. You saw the exchange. Wright had that on his hip as he got the ball, and he was having problems containing it, a little pop in the middle, and the Trojans get the first turnover of the afternoon. It'll be first down and 10 from their own 32-yard line. Trip comes to the near side. Saroyce so goes to the far. Up the middle is Thompson. Brian Thompson dragging tacklers forward. He'll pick up four yards. Good pick up on first down on the Trojans. Happy as long as they get three or four. They're doing their job. And a couple of times now, we saw True very close, one tackle away from breaking one. We see Thompson there. If he doesn't get grabbed, he's going a long way. And we saw that last week, and after we saw that a few times, Thornton did indeed break a lot of long touchdown runs. This team very capable of that. Counter with Mercier. He comes up through the middle, and he fights forward. He'll be very close to a first down. Another look, and that's nice to keep the Hawks off balance right now. First time, fullback over the middle. Now the counter play to Mercier. Larry Kinch on the tackle. He was grabbing at the ball of Mercier. Mercier had to grab on to hold the ball, but that afforded him the luxury of pulling him forward for a couple of extra yards, and now they'll take a timeout for a measurement. 4.17 to go first quarter. No score between the Golden Trojans and the Hawks. You're watching Thornton Football on CTV 30. Uh, my family's affiliation with Stockholm Benefit Savings Bank goes back at least 100 years. My grandmother made deposits at the bank, including one from me when I was born. Our family has done business with the bank for over four generations. Why? Because Stockman Benefit Savings Bank is a very human place. One is not a mere account number, but a person treated with respect and appreciation. We all have choices, and Ben's Flooring has been the choice of many for all their flooring needs and more. And now, more than ever, because the Trustmark Carpet Selection System has come to Ben's Flooring. This system, emphasizing style, budget, and practicality, will help you make the right decision in choosing your new carpet. At Ben's Flooring, carpet selection is simple and pleasurable with the aid of a trained Trustmark salesperson to help you select a carpet you can feel good about. Have a happy Trustmark shopping adventure at Ben's Flooring. Quality product and superior service is what you'll always find when you visit Deering Lumber for all of your home building and garden needs. Located at 14 Elm Street in Biddeford, they feature one of the area's finest selections of lumber, paint, windows, and hardware, as well as a wide selection of lawn and garden products. For over 130 years, it's been quality products and dependable service that stand behind the name Deering Lumber and make them a favorite. Stop in today and look over the outstanding selection. You won't be sorry. Trojans come up just short on the measurement. It'll be third down and about six inches. Interesting here. That close, a lot of teams will just let the quarterback do the sneak. Of course, Durant's a very capable runner. Of course, you got Brian Thompson in the backfield too. That's one or the other, you would think. 
Thompson busts outside and he'll have enough for the first down. And I think that's a good choice. When you need the tough yardage, give the ball to Thompson. So the Trojans now pick up their second first down of the afternoon. Both teams, as we said at the top, really trying to continue earning respect in Western A. There's a couple of 4-0 teams right now that are maybe not the greatest of teams, but they've kept their record unblemished, both Shevers and Biddeford right now. Taranso cuts up inside nicely. Gets some tough yardage. Good time right now for Duranso to go back to that huddle and remind the Thornton Academy ball carriers to hold on to that ball because Marsh were definitely tackling football here thus far this afternoon. I was just going to make note of that. They really go after the football do the Hawks. Trojans definitely have to be leery of that. Grafts the ball. Ball just at midfield now. Golden Trojans looking at a Second down and five. Good down here to challenge the Hawk defense. And it's Thompson into the secondary. And he'll punish his way forward for an extra five yards, a 10 yard pickup, and Thorn Academy well into Hawk territory. Aggressive running once again by Thompson, getting hit at the 45 and bullying his way close to the 40 yard line, right at the 41. And this is what I expected this afternoon. Trojans to continue what they did last week against Bonnie Eagle. Mix it up on the ground. Taranto tries to cut it up inside. Does a nice job. He had three defenders out there and able to juke by the first one and get forward for positive yardage. They did a great job, did the Hawks set, covering up on the pitch man, Mercier. And he made the right choice because had he pitched it, as you said, three Marshwood Hawks to the outside. And just prior to the snap of the ball, the corners for Marshwood are backing up, giving about a 10-yard cushion on the wide receiver. You think something quick would be open out there on the flat? Taranto to throw. Fires out, and Doyon has it slip right through his hands. Well, got to come up with that reception. Exactly. Duranzo does a nice job airing it out off the hands of Doyon, and you absolutely have to come up with those receptions. Third down and eight now, and the Golden Trojans are nearing that four down territory. If they could pick up four or five positive, you would think they'd go for it on fourth and short, but they need to pick up something positive here. You gotta like the fact thus far that Duranzo has had plenty of time to throw the ball. Well, that line has come full circle since that first week. Duranzo airing it out downfield for trip and out of bounds. Tried the out and up, and Duranzo pump fake, but the Hawk defenders, the corners, they're just backing up. So Thornton really right now can throw underneath all day long if they can just connect. Because the Hawks are very, very shy right now from last week getting burned deep a couple of times. They're backing up at the Mar snap of the ball. Mauricio was open coming down the middle of the field beyond the first down marker. Booten just barely gets it off. Hanscom comes up, fields it. Mauricio takes him down right there. Corey Gray giving help along with Travis Roy. Great coverage by the Golden Trojan punting team. And the Hawks will take over at their own 16 yard line. Minute 42 to play in the first quarter. Village Inn Restaurant scoreboard. Thorn Academy nothing, Marshwood nothing. In this election season, you've heard what the others promise. Now let us tell you what we guarantee. Variety. Yes, we have something for everyone. Just look. And all at low prices. Sorry, we can't do anything about the taxes. Full employment, and we strongly support the community. Remember, if you're looking for a party to join, come to our campaign headquarters. We promise to satisfy you.
kids, pets, odors, spills, the list is endless. But with Surf Pro Cleaning Service, your house can be spring fresh year round. With carpet, furniture, wall, and in-house drapery cleaning, insurance claim specialist, and odor removal, no job is too big for the technicians at Surf Pro. If dirt and cleaning are a problem for you, let Surf Pro take the worry out of your life and put clean, fresh happiness in your home. Hubs Exxon and Mini Mart, conveniently located on Elm Street in Saco, is also a state liquor agency. Bob's has a large variety of your favorite brands of beer, wine, and liquor. Whether you're planning a last-minute party, get-together, or just a quiet, relaxing evening at home, Bob's has just about everything you need. Sandwiches, snacks, soda, chips, and your favorite alcoholic beverage. Stop at Bob's today and get your get-together together. Bob's Exxon and Mini Mart, they're for you. Doolin brings him out, first down and 10. Hand off right up the middle, right. Right gets his legs going forward and picks up seven yards on first down, maybe eight. See where they spot him down. Get another favorable spot. Seven tough yards. Second back through Whalen, and he should have enough for the first down. So far it's been a field position war here in the first quarter, and Thorne Academy getting the better of it after starting from their own 20. They've Moved it up the field a couple of times, and the Hawks now starting this drive from their own 16. First down and 10. Hand off to the big fullback, and they'll get three yards. Ball on the ground, but the whistle had already blown. And you look up the clock, Jay, with just a half a minute to go, you fully would expect the game this afternoon to go by very quickly with all the ground maintenance that we're going to see. Well, Thornton certainly can throw the football against this Hawk team. You saw them hurt last week by the pass, and the Golden Trojans have had receivers open. This will be the last play of the first quarter. Second man, it's Whalen, comes up through a good surge. Whalen really using his legs well there, and that'll do it in the first quarter. We played 12 minutes here in Elliott, our Village Inn restaurant scoreboard. Thorne Academy nothing, Marshwood nothing. Back with second quarter action right after this. Animal crackers next to Jurassic dinosaur cookies. Gumballs and Mary Janes next to Nintendo bubblegum. Penny candy everywhere. Are you in the Twilight Zone? No, you're at the Wayway store where every day is a step back to 1929. Stop in and visit with Catherine and Peggy for all your everyday grocery needs and then some. And remember a slower, kinder time. From penny candy to padlocks, dried beans to dolls with homemade outfits, you'll find it at the Wayway Store. Step back in time at the Wayway Store without leaving today. Tradition and Maine go hand in hand. And one tradition the locals enjoy is visiting Wormwoods by the Breakwater, Camp Ellis. Wormwoods has been a family affair for more than 50 years, serving up the finest and fresh seafood, certified Angus beef, as well as chicken and pasta dishes. Wormwoods enjoys making you feel at home with hearty meals, lighter portions for small appetites, and gladly accommodates those with special dietary needs. Visit Wormwoods. Become a part of the tradition. Welcome back to Elliott and our little house on the prairie. Of course, a beautiful view here from the broadcast booth out into the countryside of Elliott. Wouldn't mind owning that house over there. I'll take the one to the left. You want the bigger one? Yeah. I could only afford that small one on the right, so that's why I had my... You can have the condo. Trying to stay within my means. You can have the condo all back and I'll... <laughs> rent free, Jay. Let's buy it. Golden Trojans and Marshwood in a very important mid-season contest. Both teams coming in two and one. Trojans with the very disappointing opening 
season loss to Noble, then coming back very impressive with hammerings of Waterville and Bonnie Eagle. Hawks coming out against Eastern A with a victory, and then the win over Massabesic in a high-scoring affair. Then last week, shocked here on their homecoming day by the Sanford Redskins. The Redskins, a very improved team this year as well, so Hawks trying to get it back after a tough loss last week. Trojans trying to keep it going. Well, and off the right side, he'll get four yards and another first down. He's talked about number 15. Andy Wright, 6'1", 250, only a junior. The backfield littered with underclassmen. The Hawks have Newland, a junior, at QB. Whalen, a sophomore. Wright, the junior. Hanscom with their wideout. He's a senior. First down and 10. Hawks started this possession from their own 16-yard line. Quarterback trying the fake and the trap in Thorn Academy's defense. Converging up front. Gain of a couple on the play. A little bit of a different look there, faking to the fullback and trying to sneak one over the middle. Thorn Academy doing a lot of shuffling on defense here this afternoon. Well, those big bodies of Marshwood will tend to wear you down, so if they can keep their troops fresh here in the first half. We talked about the depth that has emerged for Thorn Academy on the defensive line and in the backfield. Coach Agresti using that early on in this one. And movement on the offensive line of the Hawks. Number 64, Scott Holton, just nudging forward. It'll be a five yard penalty, our first of the afternoon. The Hawks trying to go on a hard count to get Thornton Academy to jump. That time it backfires. And now they're gonna face a second and very long. Hanscom comes to the near side. They go with an eye formation in the backfield. Trying to run a screen up over the middle. Hanscom comes forward, he's got a hole. And good tackle from the back side by Justin Allen. Hanscom starts at the split on this side of the field. And once penetration gets through for Thornton Academy, he runs right down the middle once again. Second time we've seen the screen work effectively for Marshwood here this afternoon. Allen does make the tackle, but He's got him in sole coverage over. He's got to read that sooner and get up. Although, if you come across, if you're playing a zone defense, you can't do that because he's coming across the middle at the line of scrimmage and someone comes out into your deep zone, you're burned for six. So, good call by the Hawks. Second man through. It's Whalen. He'll have the first down. And the Hawks doing a nice job on the ground. And they're mixing it up enough to be effective also, Jay. Big Scott Jacarton comes back in the defensive alignment. He's in there with Heidish and Jim Buffard across the defensive front. So the Trojans going to a 5-3 defense. And now Newland, after a long discussion, turning back, talking to his fullback right, finally uses a timeout. 9.34 to go in the second quarter. We'll take a break. You're watching Thorn Academy High School football on CTV 30. Village Inn Restaurant scoreboard. Nothing either side back after this. Wagner's Market, 188 Lincoln Street, Saco is your neighborly variety store with all your daily needs in one quick stop. The biggest and best subs in town, ice cold beer and soda, pizza, a fine deli selection, mega bucks tickets, and daily specials. All ready for you in seconds for a speedy takeout. If you want to eat in, Wagner's has plenty of space for that, too. Wagner's is infamous for its gut bomb sandwich, big enough to bomb any TA opponent or to serve to the entire TA football team who's hungry for wins and Wagner's. 188 Lincoln Street, Saco, sponsor of the gutsy player of the game. 
If you're looking for something to do or someplace for fun, look no further. There's always something going on at Soho's an authentic English pub open year-round at the beach. They've got the longest happy hour of anyone that starts at noon and goes to wait every day. Monday night is football night with free chili, 99-cent Miller drafts, and T-shirt giveaways. Thursday belongs to the ladies with drink specials all evening. Next up, it's DJ Dan and Saturday Night Madness, where you can relieve the recession with half-price well drinks, two beer specials, and red light specials. Jay Harper and Mark Paquette back with you as Marshwood putting together a very nice drive here starting from their own 16 yard line have ground out three consecutive first downs. They're just into Trojan territory. Academy's defense right now getting moved back just a little bit and the good ball fakes by the quarterback Newland is keeping Thorn Academy off balance. Newland breaks outside, almost stays on his feet. He'll pick up nearly 10 yards, and where they spot him again. Hawks getting very formidable spots. They're getting great spots by the officials when they go down. And I think that will be enough for a first down. Again, three ball fakes, and then the quarterback breaks it outside. Yeah, and Thorn Academy lost containment on this side of the field, and that's why he was able to pick up such a large gain. Cotton doing a nice job on Mark Holloway. Of course, Holloway going at 6'3 and 300. Tricotton going at 270 pounds. So the Hawks, another first down. Definitely grinding it out here. Keeping Thorn Academy's potent offense off the field. And that's what head coach Guy Lajeunesse wants to do. Of course, his Days coaching at Trape Academy, he was a run and shoot type coach. They pass the ball all the time. Here in Elliott, he's gone with what he has, and that's a lot of size, and he's been mostly happy to keep it on the ground. Again, it's the quarterback. Newland does a nice job again, picking his hole. I just can't picture a Marshwood football team with the run and shoot offense. Well, and definitely it does not fit their, their style. Well, after the numerous, numerous championships won by Rod Watton, here at Marshwood. Legend has taking over for a legend. Didn't want to change the chemistry and the type of offense that had worked for a number of years. I don't think the boosters in the community would have appreciated that too much. Still working. Second and six, well and big hole. And right now, Thorn Academy's defense is in disarray. The Hawks are just picking them apart. Ball now at the 25 of Thorn Academy. And right now the Trojans are losing that battle up front in the line of scrimmage. The Hawks are really pushing the front four or five of Thornton Academy around the field right now. Thornton may be in need of that defensive timeout. Send double wide, wide outs to the far side of the field. First time we've seen this formation. The pitch comes this way to Whalen tripped up at the line of scrimmage. Ryan True gets enough of them to knock him down. Again, another very good spot. And they give him progress for about a one yard pickup. It'll be second down and nine. Ryan Jackson goes to the far side of the field. Right breaking tackles, and he fights his way forward for a gain of about seven. Not wrapping those arms. They definitely had him stopped. Credit goes to the fullback, keeping the legs going, Jay. And that brings up now a third down and three. Right now, someone has to step forward for Thornton Academy defensively and come up with a big play. Split backfield, they go to the second back through Whalen, spins his way through there and fights forward. He should have enough. Move so the chains again. Marshford again using three downs to get the first down, keeping it on the ground. The clock continues to run and we're under seven minutes to play here in the second quarter. 
Trojans have had two possessions so far here this afternoon. Trojans got to dig in here. This is the time to make a stand. Kinch comes to the near side, split backfield. They go to right, big hole, and he gets hammered, but then he pounds forward. Gain of five on first down. And as much as it hurts, they're going to have to start hitting that back down low, because if you hit him up by the shoulder pads, he's going to carry you for five additional yards every time. Trojans come out now with their goal line defense. Whalen again finds a big hole and he punches forward. He's got great power in his legs, does the sophomore tailback. Tom Whalen, 5'8", 185, and he gets hit and he just keeps those legs pushing and able to surge forward. And it's going to be, I believe, a first down and goal to go now inside the five. Well, we had heard before the game that the Hawks like to go over the right side of a Holton and Holloway, and now it's easy to understand why. They're doing a great job up front. I don't know why they need a measurement here. The ball over the five-yard line. The marker was right at the five-yard line. Looks like a no-brainer here. First down for the Hawks. Hello. So the Hawks are now in a first and goal situation. They started this drive from their own 16-yard line. So they've gone. 81 yards to date, and now just have five more. And the way their big backs have been punching through the holes, the Trojans are going to have to do something spectacular here to stop. Pitch out wide. Whalen cuts in back outside. He'll get a couple, maybe three. Hawks mixing it up there, going wide. Well, and showing some very good running ability, good instincts. Full house backfields. They put their big lineman in the backfield, number 64. And right, though, stood up on the left side. The Golden Trojans come up big. That's how you have to hit them, Jay, right down low by the knees. And then, of course, you need some help from your other friends on defense. Travis Roy, Justin Allen, and Kevin Duras. In on the stop for the Golden Trojans. Under five minutes to play in the second quarter. Still no score, but the Hawks knocking at the door. Third down and goal at the two. Right up the middle. Let's see if they give it to him. And now they do. So Marshwood goes 84 yards. And I can only guess at the plays they picked up about seven first downs in that 84 yards. So you would think somewhere around the 20 play variety of a drive. And again, we'd have to go back and count those. I c usually I keep those in my head pretty well, but there well were, beyond my count. And I would say at least 11 minutes off the clock. Yeah, that is a professional drive and just a huge momentum breaker. Hawks take the lead 6-0 with 4.42 to go. And Simmons in for the extra point try. And it's said good. Looked like it sailed a little bit to the left from our vantage point. But nonetheless, it's good. Our Village Inn Restaurant scoreboard. Marshwood 7, Thorn Academy nothing. You're watching Trojan Football on CTV 30. When you need to stop, make sure it's an advanced brake service. Curl Up and Die, a premier styling salon, keeps getting better and welcomes Jennifer to its crew of the finest professional stylists in the area. They offer full service, ultra-modern hairstyling and coloring for men and women, facials, manicures and waxings, and pride themselves on personal professional service. Let them help you decide what you need to look great. Private styling rooms, a convenient location, and the finest stylist offering service tailored to your needs. Sum up, curl up, and die. Why not make an appointment today? Welcome back to Elliott. And the Trojans might need to phone home here and find some help. Marshwood, as we said, almost a 20-play drive. 
and eating up, we estimate, 11 to 12 minutes in that drive. As point by pointed out by uh, Dennis Avery, our cameraman, first time the Thornton Academy defense has been scored on in the first half this year. The Trojans had seven quarters of shutout ball up until late in the game against Bonnie Eagle last week. Not so much that you're down seven nothing, it's just the way that Marshwood was able to do it, to grind it out and just hammer it down your throat. Trojan's offense right now needs to get something going here and answer back with 442 to go in the first half. Plenty of time for the Golden Trojans offense and they've shown they can move the football and we've also seen Trojans have some passing routes and some room to roam in the Marshwood secondary. The Hawks secondary has been playing the have been playing the receivers very soft, giving a lot of room up front, so that definitely is there. So Royce comes to the near side. They split Mercia to the far side. Demers in at the tailback slot. It'll be Demers. Cutting up inside, stays on his feet. Watch this young man go, zigzagging his way into Marshwood territory. A gain of 17 yards for Nathan Demers. And that kid can cut on a dime. There go those quick feet again. He does two things very well, Jay. He, he sits back and reads his block, first of all, and he can quick cut so quickly before the defender has a chance to make the adjustment. And you saw a perfect example of it there. Trojans go to the double slot formation this time. So Royce comes to the near side. Thompson takes the handoff and he pounds forward for five. So the Trojans right now playing a quick inspired offense. And this team, as we saw last week, can score in a hurry. They can go yard at any time from any place on the field. And as we mentioned before, Ryan True a little bit under the weather, bronchitis and under medication and maybe already a little bit tired. Ball at the 45 now. Mercier comes to the near side. Taranto could be audibling here. See sole coverage? No, they go to Demers. Demers breaks a tackle, lunges forward. A great second effort by Nathan Demers and he'll be Couple yards short of the first down, but he puts the Trojans in great shape here, third and short. Demers was hit about the 45 yard line. Looked like he had been stopped, but a great job by keeping the legs going and Thornton Academy now third and short. If they can get it close enough, Jay, they could possibly go for it on fourth down with only 3.05 to go here in the first half. Demers only 5'5", 155. But we've seen this kid's got a lot of heart. Durantso looking to throw. Fires out, over, beautiful. Got Soroyce. Sir Soroyce hauled down at the 29. Taken down by Craig Gould. But a nice pass by Durantso there, throwing over the linebacking, just over the coverage into the deeper zone. He really threaded the needle on that one, and Marshwood is going to have to tighten up that coverage. It's going to be there all afternoon. And now that Trojan offense starting to click, showing all their weapons. 2.45 to play in the half. Trojans down seven. Demers trying to get wide now. One man to beat and a nice tackle by Larry Kinch. Kinch showing some speed himself, getting to the outside and bringing Demers down. Well, the only reason that Kinch was able to get to Demers is because Demers took the pitch and was waiting to read the block. And Kinch was on a full run trying to get wide because he, he knew that Demers probably would have to go that way. And once Demers made up his mind, Kinch able to make up enough ground to get just enough of them. Clock winding to the two minute mark. As the Trojans break huddle, second down and 10. Doyon comes to the near side, double slot formation. Mercier in motion, it's stood up. And he's hauled back. Mercier again was that one player away from breaking that one too. Trojans in that four down territory. So it's a third down and nine, a minute 34 here. 
So the Trojans still with time and two downs, as we said here, because well within Hawk territory, no problems. And with the time that Marshwood has been using, you wouldn't think that they'd be able to uh, drive down the field with so little time left here. So Thornton Academy can go for it on fourth. Gould with sole coverage with Saroyce. Could see a hitch and go here. Fumbled snap. Trojans able to get it. Heidish falling back on it. So now the Trojans will have to use a timeout with a minute six to go and a fourth and long staring at them. Dresty comes on to the field. So the Trojans use a timeout. And now it changes pretty much from a third and nine. You're looking at fourth and 15. Then the Trojans will probably have to air it out. But Hawks secondary again has been very vulnerable and so far they've been unable to get a pass rush off. Yeah, the Trojans up front have done a real nice job of protecting Durant, so giving him the time he needs to throw the ball. Now it's important for the receivers to remember they have to clear that first down marker. Coach Agresti out there discussing what they're going to run. And that the turnover like that is, is very unfortunate because they had been doing a very nice job moving the football down the field, uh, trying to do a little clock maintenance at the same time, and big third down coming up. And instead of gaining, they end up losing five yards. So now really kind of putting themselves in a hole here. Trojans, definitely an impressive drive here. So they've picked up large chunks of real estate on the ground. Self-destruction on this series of downs here. Fourth and 15. Pass back to Mercier. Mercier going to throw it. Gets it down the field. Is it far enough? No, it's picked off. And they should spot him down at about the one-yard line. Let's see where they'll spot the football. Kind of hard to fool the Hawk defenders deep. They just back up. It, it doesn't matter. They're not giving a lot of run support on the corners. They just back up, and that a nice call. I liked it. But again, coverage was just there. Well, they had three defenders back on Demers. Now, this is a big thing here. If they spot it at the one, the Trojans have a shot to, to send some men here and go for a safety. And there's a long conference. They could have said he was in the end zone and brought it out to the 20, but... They stay with it at the goal line, so Thorne Academy with 51 seconds left can try to send a house up the middle and force a safety. Send stunts right at the quarterback. Send three or four guys right at him and see what can happen. Just need to be careful here and not get everybody too tight up in there. Well, that's it. You, you keep a Justin Allen and Chris Mercier back on the corners to protect. Trojans do use a timeout. Forty-five point four seconds remain in the half. The Golden Trojans do use a timeout. Village Inn Restaurant scoreboard: Marshwood seven, Thorn Academy nothing. Looking ahead to the second half, the Hawks will start with the football. Another thing about that loss on third down, Mark, you go back to that. If the Trojans pick up four or five yards, they have a fourth down and inside the 30, down inside right around the 25. It's potential for a, a field goal attempt. The wind very strong, blowing in the favor of the Golden Trojans. Tripp has definitely shown the leg thus far this year to be able to get the ball. I believe you said last week his range was about 45 yards. And they were certainly within that range. Ball now out to the three yard line. So a good pickup by the quarterback, Newland. He's done an excellent job here at running the offense for Marshwood. Then the junior stepped in with Scott Orlando, the 
senior quarterback broke his arm in preseason. Orlando, an outstanding, exciting back who's been playing QB for a couple of years. And it's just a shame for that young man to get his senior year eaten up with an injury like that. They say he could be back for postseason play. Second down. Again, the quarterback, Newland, will keep it. Trojans will again use a timeout. That their last. We'll take a break. 42.2 seconds remaining here in the first half. Marshwood 7, Thorn Academy nothing. Back after this. Back to Elliott, get a look at the countryside view. Lord Academy using their last timeout, so Marshwood here, they just maintain the ball. Can Whalen second back through? See if Marshwood has to punt it off before they'll get a penalty. Uh, they just whistle the play in there. I don't know. Well, they just gave themselves a little bit of breathing room for their kicker. Now, right now, Jay. I would take five. Let the clock run down, take the five yard penalty. Actually, they have timeouts in the bank, so that's probably what they will do, is let it rewind down, then take a timeout, and that is what they do. Clock is stopped with five seconds remaining. So this last minute here certainly has extended a very fast moving first half of play. The Trojans using all their timeouts and trying to force Marshwood into that punting situation. Hope something big could happen here. Block punt or maybe a big return. Again, nothing to lose here. You don't worry about roughing the kicker in this situation. You just go after the punter and see what can happen. And you wouldn't expect Marshwood to be kicking the ball too. Chris Mercier. I'm sure they're going to be pooching it away to the side of the field as far down as they could. Well, in another situation, just thought of, they don't even really have to punt it, do they? No, that's Why true. not just take the snap and hold on to the ball? I don't know, though. That might could backfire. Thornton doesn't have enough. Well, they could potentially give Thornton one play of the change of possessions. Clock would stop. They'd have to use up the whole five seconds. Hanscom drops back into the end zone in punting formation. Mercier goes back to, now comes up, you know, settle in right around the 35, 40 yard line. Trojans do come with pressure. Mercier comes up. Van Sickle hauls Mercier down at the 38-yard line, and that'll do it in the first half. Well-played half by both teams, and Marshwood with the outstanding 84-yard drive. And a touchdown by the fullback, Andy Wright, and they now lead 7-0. 24 minutes under the belt and 24 more to go. And Mark, you look at this game, the Golden Trojans have moved the football. They just have been unable to put it all the way down the field to turn it into points. Marshwood shows they have the power in the big boys up front to move the Thornton defense now. They wore them down on that very long drive. Thornton Academy, though, in a good one right here this afternoon. Great game, and, and Thornton Academy in the second half is going to have to take advantage of their offensive opportunities because it's very apparent they're not going to get many opportunities on that one drive Marshwood taking between 11 and 12 minutes off the clock and they receive the ball in the second half. Thornton's defense is going to have to come up big, get the ball back quickly for the Trojan offense. And Thornton Academy offensively just going to have to make something happen. 
Huge game. Both teams at 2-1 and one right now in Western A. The victors really put themselves in fine playoff position. The losers will have to scramble in the second half of the season. We'll take a break. Back with our halftime right after this. gift shop. Gifts galore from Maine and beyond for every taste and budget. It's a Tisket and Tasket, rear 605 U.S. Route 1, Scarborough. In the past year and a half, the new Amanda Mays has established itself serving up the finest breakfast in the area and with good reason. The freshest ingredients, big portions, small prices, friendly service, and great gossip combine to give your day a winning start. There are specials every day, soups, chowders, sandwiches, something for everyone, and it's all available for takeout. Plus, they cater any event. For a very pleasant dining surprise, try Amanda Mays, where good friends meet and make new ones. Welcome back to Elliot J. Harper along with Mark Paquette. Dennis Avery working the camera this afternoon and Tony Ryan once again on the stats. After one half of football, Marshwood leading 7-0. Looking at our halftime stats, Thode Academy coming up with 83 yards of total offense, 58 on the ground, 25 via the pass. The Hawks counter with 124 yards of total offense, 103 on the ground and 21 in the passing department. Hawks really not dominating this game as far as total yardage, but they had that very impressive 84-yard drive, a drive that we figure had to include at least 18 to 21 plays, 11 to 12 minutes, and Andy Wright punching it in from two yards out, and the PAT up and good by JT Simmons. You start this second half, Thorne Academy's defense will be asked to do something big right away because the Hawks start with the football and Thorne Academy can ill afford to let Marshwood have another long sustained drive and get any more points on the board before the Trojans can counter. What the Hawks are doing, and that is dominating the line of scrimmage. That long drive they had, as you said, about 18 plays, and they were able to pick up five and six yards a pop. Thornton Academy has to do a better job of somehow congesting the holes and also keeping that outside containment, because we saw a few times on that drive, the quarterback, after a double fake, coming to the outside and picking up very good yardage for the Hawks. Offensively, I think Thorne Academy still has to stay very patient and mix pass and throw, and they'll be able to make something positive happen, hopefully. And the rushing department for the Golden Trojans, Demers with only three carries, 22 yards. He had that excellent 15-yard run and a couple others thrown in there. Ryan True, though, the big story, two carries, only three yards. We talked about him being under the weather and not feeling that well, and that has been a factor here in this contest for the Trojans, but Demers, a very excellent running back and replacement in that tailback position. Mercy had four carries for 12 yards, Thompson four for 18 yards, Duranzo three for three yards, and Chris Duranzo two completions in five attempts for the 25 yards, and the Trojans with Ryan True walking onto the field with his shoulder pads off in his hand, and Again, he is not feeling well. That really probably hurts Thorne Academy more defensively than it does offensively when you have such a excellent back in Demers. And on the defensive side, you gotta come with some kids. They gotta step up big and true so big. He does a nice job at stuffing the line of scrimmage and of course in pass rush position from his defensive end slot. So the Trojans here in the second half as they get ready to stretch out, obviously gotta make something happen early, but they've shown they can move the football against Marshford. They just gotta get some points out of it. Yeah, they certainly do, and, and the Ryan True, if they lose him defensively, as you said, when you play in a big team like Marshall, there's that wear down factor with the big bodies. You have to be able to keep as many fresh players in as you can. We've seen them uh, juggling their lineup defensively, trying to keep players fresh. Hopefully Ryan will be able to get back into the game in the second half, but if you look down there on the sidelines right now, you see him with his pads and jersey off, so that's not a good indication that he'll be back in the lineup. Not a good sign as you get a look at Thornton Academy's cheerleaders performing at the half. We're just about set for second half action. We'll take a break and come back with the second half. You're watching Thornton Academy football on CTV 30. 
Sometimes you just want to do the same old thing. When you need photocopies at reasonable rates, you want to visit Copy It again. Multiple copies, collated, stapled, or bound are no problem for Copy It's high-speed copier. Don't go anywhere else for copies up to 36 inches wide or for blueprints. But when you want some color in your life, go to Copy It. Copy It's full-color copier reproduces photos and artwork like you wouldn't believe and gives pizzazz to business documents. Whether you want the old or the new, go to Copy It for all your copy needs. Back in Elliott, Jay Harp along with Mark Paquette as we get set for the second half. Josh Farron now will do the kicking chores. Ryan Chu pretty much done for the day, it appears, suffering from bronchitis and having a tough time breathing down there. So the Trojans will have to fill his slot on both sides of the ball. Back deep to receive is Pat Hanscom in the middle. Gould to the right, well into the left. Farron, a line drive wobbly kick. Takes a tough high bounce. Fielded by Hanscom. Comes up through a nice hole, and he'll get it out to the 30-yard line, where the Hawks will start first down and 10. Big series defensively right now for Thornton Academy. They have to come out and make the stop, get the ball back to their offense, not allow Marshwood to pick up first downs and move those chains. They'll have the wind at their back here in the third quarter, which obviously will help them if they want to air it out. Tim Harder, number 84, comes in at right defensive end for True. Harder, 6'2 now, 185. He has really shot up in the last couple of years. He's a junior. And off Whalen on first down, bangs into the secondary. That'll be a gain of seven on the play. And needless to say, the Trojans are going to have to do a better job on first down. Marshwood picking up where they left off in the first half. Power football. Marshwood now will just really put everyone up the line of scrimmage and try to perfect, protect the football and hand off. And again, it's right. He'll have enough for first down, but we'll check the penalty. That one's going to go against the Hawks, Jay. So a break. Fourth Thorn Academy here, and that's what they need, a couple of things to go their way to start the second half. That'll put Marshwood in a second and long situation. And only the second penalty, I believe, of the day, and they're both in motion variety against Marshwood. Hawks overcame the last one in that long, sustained drive. They did have a penalty in that one, but able to get the yardage back on that nice screen pass over the middle to Hanscom. Jackson comes to the near side. And off the second back. And again, the back fighting for extra yardage. That time, John Ricker, number 20, on the carry. Picked up a couple of extra yards on effort and poor tackling by Thorne Academy. The Trojans a little slow to get in there in their run support. Got to get a lot of bodies on those ball carriers. And credit goes out to the Hawks here this afternoon, running extremely hard. Third down and... We'll save four yards and a big play here for the Golden Trojans early. If they can hold here, they could force the Hawks to kick it away. Ricker goes in motion. They go to the second man, Ricker. He gets stood up and taken down. Ricker almost able to bounce off in a second effort, but he'll come up short, and that should put Marshwood into a punting formation. That's what the Trojans needed, come out here and make a big defensive stand to start the second half. Very lucky there, and Marshwood just a bit conservative. And again, hurt by that motion penalty. 9.55 to play in the third quarter. And Thorne Academy should get their first possession of the second half. Hands come off the side of his foot and out of bounds, and that'll be about a 14-yard punt, so the Trojans will get great field position. Hanscom just shanked it. Was kicking into a win, but never even got it off the foot. So the Trojans, with a great start here to the second half, if the coaching staff would have drawn it up on the board, I don't think they could have put it any better. And let's see if the Trojan offense can utilize their quickness with Demers and Mercier in that backfield. The wind is pretty stiff right now at Rod Watton Field, and 
very open stadium and the wind does blow across. First down and 10, Mercia goes to the far side, Sorois to the near, they come out of the eye and it's Thompson out of the fullback position, he'll get a couple. And with Demura's back there, you'd like to see the Trojans go with the fake to the fullback and get the ball outside so he can utilize that speed to the corner. Maybe exactly what they're doing is use the fullback, get him thinking fullback so you can exploit it on second down. Trip comes to the near side. Sorois goes to the far. Double slot formation again with Demers and Mercier in the slots. Pass out, almost picked off. Sorois was going deep and Durantso thought he was checking up on a curl and Hanscom diving out. And the curl was definitely there. So now that brings up a third down and long. Josh Gregoire now comes in with the play. Andrew Tripp comes to the near side. Again, double slot formation. Taranto's going to throw again. Steps up, fires out, got Tripp. Andrew Tripp breaks the tackle, then knocked out of bounds inside the 30 yard line. And Taranto, great job there at stepping up into the pocket and getting it downfield. Again, Marshwood secondary is just playing off so far. Anything underneath, if you got time to throw the football, should be able to be completed. When Tripp caught that ball, the corner was still about eight yards off him, and that was after being able to react with the ball in the air. So the cushion is it really that they're giving is unbelievable. So the Trojans with a big first down now have it inside the 30-yard line. Duranzo pitches to Demers, cuts up inside, and again, Larry Kinch, the man who throws a cog in that play and shuts it down. Demers reading up inside, and as he stepped up in, there was Kinch to meet him. No gain on the play. It'll bring up second and 10. Almost the same scenario where the Trojans were right before the half, just inside that 30-yard line. It was a first down play that they shut down Demers. On second down, they went to the run play with Mercier, and that didn't work either. Got to execute here when you get down deep. Ransom's going to throw out over the middle, right into coverage, picked off. Hanscom runs into his own player, and he'll be taken down at the six-yard line. No idea where that ball was being thrown, but definitely not a Thornton receiver in sight. And Duranzo having all kinds of time, not having to rush that throw. Well, Marshwood in the first half took over on their own 16 and went 84 yards. Now they start at their... Officially the seven yard line they spotted at. The Trojans can ill afford a long sustained drive here. Again, showing they can move the football, but unable to execute down, not inside the red zone quite, but very close to it. Ricker in motion. They go to Wright. Andy Wright. Gets about three yards, it'll be second and seven. And when you have a team like Marshwood that can pound on you offensively, when your defense goes out there and does the job, you have to take advantage of that and put some points on the board. Hawks come out, double slot again, Ricker in motion. Second back through, it's Ricker. And he'll pick up another two to three, but it'll be third and... Close to four yards here, so another big play for the Hawks on third down. And in that long drive, they executed five out of six third down plays. And something we have not seen them go back to is the double fake with the quarterback to the outside. They, they use that effectively in the first half. So another big play early in the third quarter. Marshwood leading 7-0. Newland brings him out. 
in double slot formation and jumping in the defensive line. Rondo got pulled off and that'll be a first down for Marshwood and just a very, very tough break. The Trojans have been playing penalty free football up to this point. But again, that big count and Rondo goes for it. And the Hawks give themselves some breathing room and move the chains. When you're playing up front defensively, you either watch ball or for movement. And that time he's trying to guess the count, gets a little jumpy and Marshwood picks up the first down. Right pounding in the middle. He stopped at about the 20 yard line, only a gain of two. But the Hawks again trying to use clock and Kyla Janess, former Benefit High School football player many years ago. Trying to stay it on the ground and a bit conservative, but it's been effective so far. His defense is doing a great job. The old bend but don't break theory. Well in the second back through and he picks up five yards and it'll be again a third down and a long three for the Hawks. Hawks been able to execute that third down play and they got another big one. Thought early on in this one, the team that scored first, you know, would be in the driver's seat, re really able to control momentum and control the tempo of this game, and that certainly has been the case here with Marshwood. Third down, it's going to be the quarterback, but he's hauled down from behind. Great job by Noel Heidish, following the pulling guard and coming from behind and taking down Newland, and that'll bring up another fourth down, and the Hawks have to kick it away again to the Golden Chargers, and they're. Fans get up and cheer for that one. Praise the defense and a good effort there. Could really use a big return here by Mauricio. Or Demers. They stand at their own 45 yard line. Again, Hanscom will have to punt into a win. A low lining kick. It bounces and stops dead inside Marshwood territory. So the Trojans do get better field position on their second possession and well within striking distance, just inside Marshwood's side of the field. 4.25 to go in the third quarter. Our Village Inn Restaurant scoreboard. Marshwood 7, Thorn Academy nothing. Party Castles is where party people go so they can get their parties off the ground. Party Castles has party supplies for every celebration. From more than a rainbow tableware to streamers, personalized balloons, and balloon delivery, Party Castles will give your party a lift. And if your special wedding day is fast approaching, a visit to Party Castles will delight you. Janine can help you with wedding invitations, rental of the wonderful balloon arch, and the wedding bell. For the most festive parties and the most beautiful weddings, you've got to get to Party Castles. So the Trojans take over inside Hawk territory. And again, they've been able to get down to the 29 yard line of Marshwood twice here this afternoon, but have gone no further. Big possession here for the Trojans. They send Mercier in motion. Let's see if they fire it out to him. They don't. Hand off inside, and Brian Thompson into the secondary. Breaking tackles and hauling down inside the 35 of Marshwood. A gain of 17 on first down. They send Mercier out in motion, and that stretches out that defense for Marshwood on that side of the field. Great hole up the middle for Thompson. And that's what they need more of that. And if they don't respect Mercier going in motion, they can always fire that out that we saw against Waterville. That quick pass out to Mercier in the flat, and then he does his magic out there. One-on-one -on -one situation or a two-on-two -two situation, he'll have one blocker in the wideout out there with him. Still a tough assignment for any defender. Trojans again, counterplay. Mercier into the secondary, breaks a tackle. Chris Mercier, and a great job of tackling, grabbing the jersey, Dustin Buttrick makes the stop. And again, Mercier, though, exploiting the secondary and picking up 13 yards. Inside to Thompson, and then a counter play to Mercier, breaking it to the outside. Now let's see if they utilize Thompson once again over the middle. 
They now are inside that red zone, the ball right at the 20. And two big plays, 17 and then 13 yard pickups for the Golden Trojan offense and they need to capitalize. So Royce comes to the near side, Doyon goes to the far. Again, double slot formation. Again, it's Thompson into the secondary and he'll take a nice chunk. Six yards on first down. And Thorn Academy really now has Marshwood reeling backwards. They don't know what's coming at them, and they're spreading the defense, as you said earlier, with the nice motion. They got to respect the speed of Demers and the speed of Mercier. And Brian Thompson, that opens up the middle for him. And Marshwood up front are shifting to the motion side of the field. So if the Trojans fake and come back to the near side, away from the motion, we may find something to the outside of the field. Thorn Academy here, second and four, just inside the 15 yard line, obviously. Four down territory, and the Trojans can stay conservative and keep it on the ground if they want. Connor with Demers into the secondary. Excellent tackle in the secondary. Ricker comes up and takes the legs out of Demers. Again, I don't know if it's just me today, but it seems to me that Thorns getting some very tough spots out there. Marshall always getting the positive spot. Wherever he goes down forward, they, they give the spot there. Thornton, it seems like they're always pulling the ball backwards. We definitely don't have the greatest vantage point when the ball is down deep. That can make a huge difference in a game, and I've heard a lot of coaches over the years complain of that. Not getting the spots, an official could really take about 20 yards off your forward progress in a stretch of a contest. Third and short, and there comes the penalty. Too much time. Coaching staff of Thornton Academy yelling them up here to hurry up and get the play off and see they were struggling to come out of the huddle with that play and now third down and seven Thorn Academy doing something that they can ill afford. Well, earlier in the game when they had the ball down there on third down we saw the fumble snap that went on to hurt them and they didn't come away with anything and now once again facing a third and very short now they've given themselves a third and about seven. So Royce comes to the near side he's got sole coverage out here with Gould. Looking that way, Durantso now scrambling. He's got some running room. And now here comes the Hawk defense. Excellent pursuit late. Looked like he had some room on that far sideline, but the Hawks come flying in, and that'll put Thorne Academy in a fourth down and six yards of ball. Just short of the 15-yard line. And the Trojans now needing... points here and obviously trailing by seven they look like they're electing to go for it trip will go to the far side so Royce comes to the near Durantso fires out got a man wide open Rick Soroyce touchdown well so Royce does a nice job of going down and get that ball and I'll tell you the throw was a little late he had him open on the break but credit goes to Durantso for throwing it to the outside and low, and Soroyce going down to get it. And for the first time this afternoon, that offense comes up big. 16-yard completion from Durantso to Soroyce, his second touchdown catch of the season. And Thorn Academy sends out Andrew Tripp, lacing up the shoe. And still a lot of football, a whole fourth quarter to go. We'll see what Thorn Academy does here. They can definitely exploit that secondary from Marshwood. Amazing how open he was in an obvious passing situation. Andrew Tripp, boom. He drills it. It's just so good to see. There's no hesitation in that leg. He just whips it through and hammers the ball. And the Golden Trojans, with a minute six to play here in the third quarter, have answered back. They go 49 yards in eight plays. And they have tied it up. Our Village Inn restaurant scoreboard Thorn Academy 7, Marshwood 7. You're watching Trojan Football on CTV 30. Nothing is tastier than fresh peaches. And Peaches Deli, 88 Soco Avenue, Old Orchard Beach, guarantees the freshness, quality, and homemade goodness of all of their food. Any time is a great time to enjoy a delicious specialty pizza or one of an almost unlimited variety of overstuffed subs. Call ahead and your order will be ready when you arrive. And be sure to pick up your favorite beverages, snacks, and mega buck tickets. For homemade freshness and quality, nothing beats the fresh taste of peaches. Guaranteed. 
Dennis Avery working the camera this afternoon. Mark Barquette along with myself, Jay Harper. And we thought we'd see a good one here today in Elliott. And the Trojans have now phoned and found home. As they reach pay dirt on a 16-yard strike from Duranso to Sorois. As Josh Farron booms one over the head of Whalen and goes through the end zone and a touchback. The Hawks will start first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. And actually, a bad bounce for the Trojans. Hey, you would have liked to see that one bounce and lay up down near the goal line, not go into the end zone and force the Hawks to try to pick it up and scramble. Trojans with great coverage coming downfield. You can definitely feel a shift right now in momentum. And really the game hangs in the balance as to who's gonna seize the momentum right here. Thornton Academy defense has come out in the second half and done a better job of stopping the Hawks and now the offense able to put some points on the board. Chris Brockman in at safety for Josh Farron right now too. And First down handoff and not much doing. Tricartan and Jason Grantham in on the stop. The Trojan five-man front doing a real nice job of causing some congestion. No place for the Hawks to go. And a little surprised at this point that they're not attempting to bounce one to the outside. Farron comes back in as does Noel Heidish. Trojans have changed that 4-4 defense today. They've on with a different look and against the big Marshwood running offense. Second back and whoa, Tim Harder, hello. Flying in from the backside and takes down Whalen for a loss of three on the play. And that'll bring up a third down and 11 now for Marshwood. We used one word last week very often defensively and that was penetration. And you saw it on that play with Harder in the backfield. And I believe this is where Thornton Academy wants Marshwood right now in a throwing down throwing situation, but they have to be very careful because Marshwood has used the screenplay effectively twice this afternoon. Well, we'll have to change ends and go about 60 yards, and Marshwood will be looking at a third down and 11 as we start the fourth quarter. An excellent contest here in Elliott, our Village Inn Restaurant scoreboard. Thorn Academy 7, Marshwood 7. We're back with the fourth and final quarter right after this. At Saka Redemption Center, redemption is our only business, so we give you the best service around. At Saka Redemption, we accept any quantity of returnables. We trust your honest pre-count. You won't stand in long lines. In fact, if you have young children or are disabled, we'll come to your car. And if your organization plans a bottle drive, team up with Saka Redemption. We'll give you 10% above their value and park our trailer for collection at your location or ours. So if you plan a bottle drive, call Saka Redemption at 283-8900 today. 12 minutes left. The score 7-7. Seven, seven. And an outstanding football contest to this point. Marshwood in that first half going 84 yards in a long sustained drive, a two yard run from fullback Andy Wright. Extra point good by Simmons and then waiting moments for the third quarter. The Trojans go 49 yards in eight plays and Chris Duranzo, the senior quarterback, finds his junior wideout, Rick Sorois, 16 yard hookup and Andrew Tripp answers back with a PAT and that's where we stand at 7-7. As you see Guy Legeness, the head coach of Marshwood, trot off the field. And the Golden Trojans with a big opportunity here. They got Marshwood in a hole deep inside their own territory. They look at a third down and 11. Jackson to the near side. Mercier has coverage out here. They go up the middle, handoff, and big hole for a moment. And the Trojans seize it up, seal it up, and then slam down Whalen. And Marshwood again will have to kick it away. And that wind has kind of shifted a bit flowing more across the field than it is from right to left or left to right. So that helps Hanscom a little bit. He had trouble with his last two punts. We'll see what Hanscom does here. Mercier and Demers go way back to their own 40, respecting the leg and seeing the wind maybe in the favor of Hanscom. No rush at all. Again, a short kick. Mercier comes flying up again. What a great job. Fields it, gets outside. Chris Mercier breaks the tackle. Now goes forward, look at him go. Great return by Chris Mercier. Mercier sees the balls on a line. Instead of letting it hit the ground, Jay, he's very aggressive, comes to get the ball, and really turns it into some great yardage. Thornton Academy has the ball 
at about the 31 yard line. We talked about Mercier and his return prowess and how good he was at returning the football, but we've commented for a couple of years now, not only the fact that he runs the ball so well, but he gets up and fields those ball. He saves his team with fair catches, 10, 15 yards a kick because he's so aggressive and so good at catching the football, and you saw what it does right there. He gets up, fields it, got a good block, and then he made things happen on that far sideline. And again, Mercia comes in motion to the near side. No one checks up on him, and they go to the fullback. Don't be surprised here if the Trojans look to fire it out to Mercia in the flat. Gain of one on the play as Thompson fights hard through the middle to pick up some positive yardage. Trojans, again, very close to Andrew Tripp field goal range. The win would be a factor, but Thorn Academy now just needing some points. Try to take the lead. Two men in motion. And there's the pass out to Mercier, and that'll come back. Demers went in motion one way. <laughs> Mercier came in motion the other way, and it was going on for about three seconds before the official finally saw it and threw a flag. Well, my guess would be that Mercier was supposed to be coming in motion to get him out on the flat, and that Demers was supposed to stay at home. Obviously, that would be the scenario because we heard the coaching staff trying to set up that play to Mercier. That's a play we've talked about in the last couple of weeks that we really like from week two. And the Trojans have yet to go back to it. There they try to, but it's all for naught. And again, a crucial mistake here. And the Trojans will have to overcome the five-yard penalty. They have three downs to overcome it. That's it. Stay positive and don't try to... Go outside your offensive sets and your offensive looks. I believe it's Josh Gregoire to the near side of the field. The counter back with Demers. Finds a little bit of room and again, digging and pulling at that football. That time, number 53, David Bune makes the tackle and boy, he was pulling football. First man for the Hawks goes down low and then everyone else coming in trying to clean up, strip the ball away. Third down and 11, and the Trojans again. You would think in that four down territory, so let's see if they stay and just try to get some forward progress and try to get it done in two instead of all here in one. Taranto to throw, fires out in the flat, great sidearm toss, gets Sorois, but he comes up just short. Boy, that was a bullet by Taranto that time. Sidearmed it over there and found Sorois in the flat. And now Thorn Academy will look at a fourth down and two. And the key to Duranzo completing that plant pass was a two or three step drop and then firing and not waiting. When the receiver was breaking open, he got the ball to him out there quickly before the corner could come up and make a stop. Huge fourth down play here for Thornton Academy with nine and a half. And Coach Agresti now goes for the timeout. And the Trojans will talk this over. 9.31 to play. Our Village Inn Restaurant scoreboard, Thorn Academy 7, Marshwood 7, and the Trojans looking at a huge fourth down and two. You're watching Trojan Football on CTV 30. For classic American fare with a continental flair, come to Silver Spoons, Southern Maine's casual dining alternative. Trojans break huddle. Huge fourth down and two. The ball at the 23 of Marshwood. The wind very strong now from right to left. It would be a huge kick into the wind, so the Trojans going for it here. And they come out, double tight ends, power formation. Demers, Mercier with Thompson in the middle. And I believe Thompson should have enough for the first down, but a flag is down, and I believe we're going to have an offsides on Thornton Academy. And it is a first down, so the Trojans, two big, big mistakes here with penalties on this offensive set. And now, let's see if they can overcome another one. Thompson did have enough for the first down. They came in with their goal line set. Good surge on the right side for the Trojans. 
They had picked up the first down. And now you would expect to see them put the ball up in the air. Trip comes to the near side. So Royce to the far. Fourth down and seven. Tarantula rolling. Got some room. He's going to try to run it. But does not have enough. So the Hawks will take over on downs at their own 25-yard line. I think Duranso giving up a little bit early on that one, unless it was a straight one run, but I do believe that was a throwing situation, and he did have Soroyes breaking open down the field. 9.08 to play in the fourth quarter, and Marshall will take over at their own 25. Trojans wasting a great opportunity after the outstanding punt return by Chris Mercier. Well, and up the middle, and not much happening there for the tailback. And since the Trojans have gone to that five and six man front, Marshwood's running game has been nil. Well, actually, they've been using that five and six man front for quite a while, but it's changed right after the very impressive drive and the touchdown by the Trojans, and that certainly can lift the defense. And ever since that, Thorn Academy's defense has really picked it up even another notch. They started very strong in the second half with two shutdowns before they scored, but. These last two now, they're firing in there, and they're hungry right now. Well, and again, he gets through the first wave, but that second wave, the Trojans, with literally 11 men within a five-yard radius, they're only five yards off the ball, are the safety and the quarterbacks. They're challenging them to throw the football. They know they have to stop Marshwood's run to have a chance of winning this ball game this afternoon. And that time, you saw a trip coming up and helping with hit run support. Third down and six yards for the Hawks. Another big third down play, and so far here in the second half, Marshwood unable to convert on third down. They've had one first down in the entire second half to date, and that came on an offsides penalty against the Trojans. Pitch out, ball bobbled, but taken right down is Whalen. Chris Mercier with help from Travis Roy, and the Golden Trojan defense almost came away with a Big turnover there. The pitch was errant. Whalen did a great job at grabbing and holding on and nearly kept his balance to get a couple of extra yards. So Thorn Academy will again drift back and a chance for Demers and Mercier. 7.20 to play here in the fourth quarter. Good snap. Hanscom with plenty of time. Gets off a good kick this time. Demers drops back and fields it at his 27. Comes up inside, gets a good block, and gets out to the 46-yard line. A fine return by Nathan Demers. And again, getting back and fielding that ball shows a lot of skill right there. That is one of the hardest things to do in all of football. And by and large, Thornton Academy has had excellent field position the majority of this afternoon, definitely winning the field position battle here. Time to make something happen. A nice drive here could chew up enough clock. And Marshall, as we've seen, they need time to score. So far, they've... Needed a lot of time to score because their one drive took nearly 12 minutes. Mercier comes out to the near side of the field. He's got sole coverage out here with Hanscom. Pitch comes to Demers, cuts up inside. He has some room to the outside. Nathan Demers cuts back inside. A great job by Hanscom coming off the block of Mercier, but then Demers puts his helmet down and just plants Hanscom on his back. And again, Demers 16 yards on first down. That was what was most impressive about that run, the little man just before the contact, sticking his helmet down and driving for an additional two or three yards. Great job by Thornton Academy, sealing everything to the inside. And nice shadow block by Mercier down the field. I stay with that formation and that run play until they can stop it. Demers can show he can get outside. Demers goes in motion. That time. Brian Thompson takes a handoff and no blocking off that left side of the line as Holton and Hanscom right there. Excuse me, number 30 that was. Justin Rio make the tackle. A yard pickup for Thompson on first down. Clock moving, approaching the six minute mark. Doyon to the near side, Soroyce to the far.
Taranso tries the option run on second down, and again, Marshall strings that out nicely. Trojans have been able to get Demers outside, but unable to get the pitch man or quarterback Duranso on the outside. So again, the Trojans, after a big first down play, find themselves looking at a third and long. And as a quarterback, Jay, if you're not going to pitch the ball to the outside, you have to cut that back up to the inside and get as much as you can. Andrew Tripp comes to the near side again. Complete sole coverage out here. Quick little hitch over here would pick up the yardage. Out over the middle, they find Chris Mercier. Mercier will have enough. Okay. What a good pass by Duranzo. He just needled that one right into the arms of Chris Mercier. And the Trojans pick it up. He certainly did rifle that one in, didn't he? Great catch by Mercier with the outstanding hands, the ball low and thrown that hard, only eight yards down the field. And the clock moves as the chains move forward. The ball now at the 28 of Marshwood. Mercier gets sole coverage out here. And Hanscom, the man that'll draw the coverage. They counter with Demers and he slipped up a little bit. Tackle on the play by the big guy, Mark Hallway. 6'3", 300 pound junior. Hallway just clogs everything up in the middle. Oh, no place for Demers to go. Thorne can continue to throw to the outside. They got sole coverage and, and the fact that they're backing off so far, they can throw short all day long. See what kind of coverage Tripp will draw to the near side. You watch just before the snap, you'll notice about a 10 to 12 yard cushion on Tripp. Again, he has time and Tripp trying to come back to the ball to the outside, can't make the catch. That's the second time this afternoon Duranzo has had that happen to him. A tough catch up high, not in the numbers, but still anywhere in that area, your receiver has to be able to come up with that ball. Well, the secondary of Marshall has basically said today, you're not gonna beat us, beat us deep. You can do whatever you want underneath, but we're not gonna let you go deep on us. And it's worked, because the Trojans only with seven points and we have 421 to play in the contest. A potential overtime situation here this afternoon. Duranzo rolling, has some time. Pocket closes down and the pass goes out of bounds. It'll be fourth down now and 11. The ball at the 30 yard line. And Thornton really here, not much to gain on a punt. You would think they would go to it. So the Trojans have converted on fourth down situations on their last drive. A big one here. They did it on their touchdown. That was a fourth and long. They scored their only touchdown of the day. Durant's throwing downfield, and a floater goes way over the outstretched arms of Rick Saroy. So the Trojans again pass up a golden opportunity, and the Hawks will get the ball with 4-12 left. And Marshwood should be able to if they can move the football, use up most of the clock here and not give Thorne Academy another shot at the football. But again, they have to move the football, and so far in this second half, they've been unable to do so. Obviously, what the Trojans want to do here is make Marshwood go three and out with a punt, get it back to their offense with some decent field position. Luke Hallway comes to the near side of the field, and Orlando looking to set that screen up. The Trojans all over it. Hanscom, though, breaks it outside. Great move, and Hanscom still going, he could go. And a touchdown saving tackle by Justin Allen. A gain of 21 yards for Hanscom, and that play was red. Trojans were there, and Hanscom just made a great move back to the outside. The Trojans overran on their pursuit. They certainly did overrun the pursuit. They lost the containment to this side of the field. And for the third time this afternoon, that screen has really hurt the Thornton Academy defense. Going back quite a few years to my playing days, I remember playing Portland High School at their field, and we had a lead in that one, and we had been well coached at reading that screen, and all day long, they ran it successfully against us, and it finally burned us for the winning touchdown. We just couldn't stop it. Fumble came out. And I think Thornton Academy has it. It's a fumble, and the Trojans got it. How do you like that? Who's got it? Brian Thompson. There's 3.55 to go, and the Trojans will take over at their own 45. Whalen came through. There was a big pop, and it may have been Thompson, the man who hit him. He also comes up with a football. 
And Thorn Academy now with their third possession in a row with outstanding field position. And right now, the time Trojans can get it down the field can also go for a long field goal to try to win this one here in regulation. This is where you need that senior leadership in the huddle and on the field. The Hawks, first turnover of the day. Thompson into the secondary, gets a block. Brian Thompson, he's at the 30, the 25, and taken out of bounds at the 17-yard line. He got a nice block by trip at about the 40-yard line. Gave him the chance to bounce it to the outside. A huge, a huge pickup for Thornton Academy. A 38-yard run for Brian Thompson on first down, and the Trojans have done that on every possession, had big gains on first down, but have yet to do anything further. First down and 10 at the 17 of the Hawks. Out of the eye. The pitch is to Demers. He's got all kinds of room, but a flag comes out. Demers on the carry for the Trojans. However, there is a Didn't look like any play. motion anywhere here, and this is a huge call because Demers has it in a first and goal situation from the five. Motion on Thornton Academy. I didn't see any movement myself. Nobody up here in the booth saw it. And this is what's happened on every possession. They've gotten down there and then a loss on first down or a penalty and it's put the Trojans back and they were looking at a first and goal from the five. That a very suspect call. I'd like to know who moves in that formation right there. And I'm sure down on the Trojan sideline they're asking that question. Who was moving? And you see that right out of the eye formation, the quick pitch to Demers, and he's still able to get outside and pick up some great yardage. Could do it to the left side this time. They counter back, Demers into the secondary, and he'll get a good first down pickup down inside the 15. And Demers has definitely shown this afternoon what he can do out on the football field. So that brings up a second and about seven. Could be six. The Trojans, again, they now could be well within the range of the foot of Andrew Tripp. And isn't it interesting how we thought just the opposite would happen, happen how Marshwood would be able to, due to their size, wear down Thornton Academy. It appears to be just the opposite here. The Hawks have taken a timeout with 3.12 to play here in regulation. And the Golden Trojans once again knocking at the door and once again being asked to overcome some very big penalties. And the Trojans now with a second down and seven. The ball just inside the 15. Four plays to get the first down, but also a chance to look at a potential field goal from Andrew Tripp. With this little amount of time left, the Trojans put any points up on the board, you would think that would be a W for the Golden Trojans. Marshwood has been unable to do anything here in the second half, and everything that they have done, other than that big 21-yard play that they got prior to the fumble, has come in pretty small chunks, five, six, seven yards at a time. And Thorn Academy's defense has played huge here in the second half. They've really stepped up and with some key substitutes playing some big minutes here. Tim Harder with a couple of big plays, filling for Ryan True and some of these guys coming off the bench today seeing much more time than they're accustomed to. A Scott Carton has really done a nice job in the defensive line position, clogging up the middle. And your usuals, Duras, Grantham, and Heidish all stepping up big and also getting a lot of minutes defensively today has been senior Jim Buffard. The offensive line has certainly performed outstanding once again here today because the Trojans have moved the ball and Duranzo has had all day to throw the football back there. Duranzo has done a much better job at throwing the football, and he's starting to find his range. Second down, and we'll call it seven. Trojans come out in the eye. They go straight ahead to Thompson. He'll only get a couple. We think Demers to the outside might be the call here. Would love to see it happen and because I think he can make a lot of things happen on that outside. And they're really leaving the left side of the field open. We've seen Demers usually go to his right, but that left side of the field, Marshall really pushing towards, pinching in towards the middle. If they go wide with a Demers, 
he could have a corner. All he's got to do is get the corner. Third down and six. The pitch is to Demers. Tries to go outside, has to bounce back, breaks one tackle, and he'll get very close. But it's fourth down and a few, and now do you go for the field goal? The ball, they spot him out of bounds. Let's see where they spot him at the 10. Trojans with a big decision right here. Fourth and a long three yards. And I think they have to kick the field goal here myself. Coaching staff complaining of the bad spot up here, and I've been seeing it all day long. It, it, it has been almost unbelievable how the spots have come for Thornton Academy here today. 2.27 left, so the Trojans with a big decision here, and also the fact that is still a window of opportunity for your opponent if you don't come up with any points or if you only come up with a three. Marshwood would have a little more time than you would think they would have had in this situation. Demers trying to... Bounced it outside and got taken out of bounds, so that stopped the clock there. So the Trojans waited and then used the timeout. And that play right there, Demers doing a nice job getting outside, but he misread the block. He should have bounced that inside. The kickout block on Finch was there. If he cut it up inside, he probably has the corner and, and maybe six points. Yeah, and by bouncing it to the outside, he was able to get by that initial uh, Marshwood defender, but the corner was right there to be able to push him out of bounds. Right now, where the kicking tee is located, it's going to be about 27-yarder. Uh, into the wind, there is a breeze coming right into the face of Andrew Tripp, so no easy task here. It is a tough decision. Tripp has shown that he has an outstanding foot. He has nice converted on every but one of his extra point attempts. He's one for one in the field goal department, a 37-yarder. But he is now looking at a kick into a very strong wind. It comes in a nice natural, uh, natural angle from left to right. A lot of pressure on the senior. Durantso, the holder. Gets it up, but the wind is gonna just take it and knock it. So that's why a very tough decision there. And you don't know in that situation, you're hoping your outstanding field goal kicker has the leg, but again, that breeze did pick up even a little bit more than it has. and Definitely pushed it away. So we could be visiting overtime here this afternoon in Elliott, and the Trojans are gonna be hard pressed to keep their spirits and momentum going their way because they have dominated here in the second half and had three opportunities deep inside Marshwood territory and unable to come up with any points. And a very suspicious offside penalty took the Trojans out of a first and goal situation. Well, in the second back through, and he's really cradling the football. I think Marshwood here is going to be happy to try to run the clock out and look for an overtime. We really haven't seen anything on the side of fancy offensively from them this afternoon other than a screen pass. They're pretty much up the middle and, and just trying to wear out the opponent. So I don't think they want to turn the ball over here with about a minute and 50 to go in this game. They'll take their chances in overtime, Well, I'm they sure. got the big bruising backs. They got a big, powerful line, so they're thinking they can get it in from 10 yards out in four plays, and they also have a good field goal kicker. Whaling off the left side and hauled down immediately. And on third down, if the Trojans stop them now, they may be wise to burn a timeout. Certainly. You would think the Trojans, after this play, would think about stopping it. Kevin Duras made the nice tackle on that play. He was in the backfield hauling Whaling down. Trojans, though, have used two timeouts, so they only have one left. So Coach Agresti has to wait till after this play to probably take one, and the Trojans may have just enough time to try to do something. Again, though, they're playing into the wind. Again, it's Whale in the second back through. And he twists his way, and he might have enough. You watch the nice spot, though. They'll give Whale in here. You watch. That ball will stay right where it is. The, the official almost lets him spot it. Still enough for a first down. He just had to get to the 30-yard line. So that, that'll pretty much spell up the Trojans' chances here in regulation. Let's go, 
Clock moves, down under 45 seconds to play. Georgia now have to play a little bit conservative. And they're looking to pass. Gonna go air it out, Mercy at sole coverage out here with Hanscom. Mercy are almost able to pick it off, but on the other hand, so was Hanscom almost able to make the reception. Mercia does a nice job. He keeps his eyes on the receiver. He waits till Hanscom starts looking back downfield for the ball, and then he turns, gets inside position, and knocks it to the ground. And just when we thought Marshwood would run the clock out and go to overtime, they try to come up big. Well, sole coverage out there. It's a great call, and you air it out, you throw it deep, so even if it is an interception, it's going to take a miraculous return to get it back into striking distance, and a great throw by... Quarterback Newland, he has performed outstanding here for Marshwood. They throw it out into the flat, incomplete. And the clock will stop again. Marshwood now looking at a third and long. And again, these incomplete passes stop the clock. So. And Thornton Academy still with that one time out in the bank. You would think Marshwood here will go on the ground, not go for that chance to throw the football and stop the clock. So, Trojans stiffen up defensively here, can stop it on the ground. They might get a shot at the football, one last chance. I read run here. It is run, Whalen. Timeout, Thorn Academy. Not yet, and now they do, wasting a couple of seconds, but the Trojans will put Marshwood in a punting situation, and again, you gotta come at them. 20.7 seconds left in regulation. And the reason you call a timeout there, obviously, uh, many things can happen, although only 20 seconds to go in the game, in regulation, I should say. Bad snap, blocked punt. Demers or Mercia could return one down the field and give Tripp another chance. Without question. We've seen a lot of things, a lot of strange things over the years go on in high school football. Certainly have. Well, it's been a great afternoon of football, and we're still maybe looking at a three or four possession contest in overtime. Again, as you remember, the ball gets spotted at the 10. Four plays for the offense. Whoever wins the toss, whoever opts to go first. And the other team gets their four plays, and if first team scores seven points and the next team scores seven, we do it again. Of course, the team that goes last has an advantage of sorts that they can decide if the other team scored seven to go for two and try to win it. Or obviously if the other team does not score, all they need is a field goal and a chance to win it that way. And as I said, both teams have shown that they have very, very talented kickers. Hanscom stands back at his 20 yard line. Mercier and Demers drop way back to their own 25. And now, Marshwood will use a timeout. A little chess match going on. 20.7 seconds. Marshwood wanted to see what Thornton was going to do, and they might change up their alignment. And of course, Coach Ingresky now could certainly change things. Main Glass is the first place you should call when you're looking for expert auto glass and sunroof installations. Our trained professionals are NGA certified technicians, equipped with the latest tools to do the job right for you. Our customer service staff can handle your insurance claim, arrange a time convenient to your schedule, the local pickup and delivery of your vehicle if needed. And in most cases, we can do the work the same day that you call. At Main Glass, when we say we do it right for you, we mean it. Andrew Tripp, field goal attempt on fourth down that comes up short. Trojans are setting up the return. They have eight men at the line of scrimmage, and Allen stands in the middle of the field, and Demers and Mercier are back. Big chess match. Everyone just stood at the line. Demers fields it. Comes up the inside and gets it to the 45-yard line with 10.6 seconds. And now the Trojans here have to be a little careful, too. You don't want to fire anything out in the flat against the wind and then risk a pick. You throw it, you want to throw it down the far sideline, the short side of the field, and you want to throw it long. 
But again, the way the coverage of Marsh would hit, you throw one out in the flat, complete, and hook a man underneath, potential pitch. And Coaching staff of Marsh would setting their men deep and back, and a Hawk defender should have no problem doing that. Taranto will throw. Plenty of time, fires out deep down the sideline. And Hanscom comes in, knocks it away. The problem with that, if he makes the pick, no Thornton players over there to cover up on that sideline. Well, you'd be asking Mauricio, it'd be a foot race. Mauricio would be the only one in the area to be able to catch on a pick. So the Trojans complete that. Again, you still need another 10, 15 yards to try another field goal. 4.2 seconds here, the Trojans can only look to the end zone. Not enough time. Unless he got out of bounds at about the 20 yard line, but still 4.2 by the time that ball goes up in the air. The game has expired. See if the Trojans just try something on the ground here. Taranto rolling. Fires out over the middle. Incomplete, and that'll do it. We'll take a break, come back with overtime. A Village Inn Restaurant scoreboard. The way we started, the way we finished, tied up. Thorn Academy 7, Marshwood 7, we're coming back with our overtime. Welcome back to Rod Watton Field in Elliott. Jay Harper along with Mark Paquette as we get set for a very, very important coin toss. Of course, the determining factor here is if you win the toss, you want to go second and you want to try to force the hand of the other team. If you can shut them down, just any kind of points will win you the game. And the other factor is too, is if they do score points, it does put the pressure back on you, but you still would have the option whether to go for two and try to win it in the first overtime or send it to another overtime. Still waiting for the captains to come out to midfield. Coach Gressy getting a long talk with the officials on that other side of the field, trying to get some explanations. Some tough calls here in the second half for Thornton Academy, a half that they really have completely dominated, but only able to come out with seven points. Hawks got on the board in the second quarter with about 4.30 to play in the half. It was Andy Wright from two yards out. JT Simmons with the extra point. Made it 7 nothing. And then midway through the third quarter, Chris Duranzo hooking up with Ricky Soroyce, a 16-yard strike, and Andrew Tripp the point after. And that's where we stand at 7-7. The Trojans then had the ball in Marshwood territory just about the entire fourth quarter. And... Again, some tough motion penalties against the Trojans and a couple of tough breaks. And Andrew Tripp, field goal try, came up short into a very stiff breeze. Hanscom, Orlando, the player with the cast on his arm, and one of the try captains, and Van Sickle. There's the coin up in the air. Marshwood has won the toss. Hawks win the toss, and they will put the Trojans probably on offense first, but you can take all that away is if you just pound the ball in, score six, line up for the extra point, fake it, go for two, got eight points on the board, bridges on the other team. But again, that'd be a gutsy call. And if you think back to, uh, I believe it was 91, Biddeford Thorn game, Thornton Academy comes up top, they score, Biddeford gets the ball, and I believe on second down, or first down actually, they fumble the ball. So sometimes if the team getting the ball first is able to score, that puts the pressure right back on you. You would think the Trojans had no problem scoring here from such a short distance. And the outside has been very vulnerable for Marshwood. And Demers reads that block right. I mean, he can go in on first down. And first down has been the play where the Trojans have come up big here in the second half. Their corners are going to have to play a little tighter on our wideouts. 
So the Trojans start on offense. We do move to the left side, the side with the wind, the wind at the back of the field goal kickers. And the Golden Trojans come out first down and 10. We're in overtime. You're watching Trojan football on CTV 30. So Royce comes to the near side. Mercia goes to the far. They come out of the eye. And this could be that pitching formation. Here it is. The pitch. Again, Demers bounces outside. He's got room. Cuts inside. Guess what? Called it. Did it. Done it. Up six. Touchdown. Touchdown. And we've been looking for that play, Jay. Demers to the outside. On the strong side, he gets the block from the tight end, pushing that defensive end inside. And Demers with that speed to the outside, diving into the end zone. Six points. And now the all important extra point here. You have to have that extra point. You gotta have it. Tripp has certainly had it all day and of course the Trojans could try some little trickery of their own and go for that too. And put all the pressure on Marshwood. The one is up and pounded through the post, so Thorn Academy up seven. The pressure now on the Hawks. Well, you couldn't ask for much better than that. One play, 10 yards, six points, extra point by trip. 14-7 Thorn Academy, and we've seen a game a few years back, South Portland, and they went five overtimes. South Portland Bangor, I think it was back a year or two ago, and Five times they kept scoring the same amount and kept going and going and going. Hopefully here for the Golden Trojans, that's not the case. Their defense has been huge, but Marshwood is huge and certainly able to grind out 10 yards in that first half very easily. Here in the second half, they only picked up two first downs. First down and 10, Hanscom goes to the far side of the field. Double slot formation. Right off the right side. Ball on the field. Let's see. Uh, saying it was down. Right picks up four down to the six. Watch the spot here. Again, right where the player goes down, never at the knees. That ball is spotted for Marshwood. Thought that time electing to go with a four-man front. Second and six. Where their success has been in the second half here defensively is dropping more guys down on the line of scrimmage. Well, this is a play right here. Marshwood gets positive yards. They're in great position. The Trojans can hold. No gain. Then that puts Marshwood in a tough position. Again, it's right up the middle. He should have it. He does. Fights his way into the end zone. Now, you got to remember, Lajeunesse played for Biddeford. He played under Mike Landry. And I don't know how many times he'd want to go into overtime here with Thorn Academy. He's electing to send his kicker on the field. But that doesn't mean, of course, every team shifts one side and goes the other. The Trojans got to be ready defensively. We know Biddeford over the years always going for two points in those crucial situations, except in the last few years. Of course, no longer coached by Mike Landry. If you remember the first touchdown Marshwood scored here this afternoon, the extra point was just inside the upright. Thorn Academy uses a timeout. They want to make darn sure that Marshwood's just going for the extra point. And again, you got to watch for the fake, but you also got to watch and try to get some pressure and try to block this thing. So the Trojans coaching staff will now talk things over. And a huge point right here. Marshwood also still with some pressure. They got to come up with a one to send it to another overtime. Or if they go for the two, I mean, they have to have it. The Trojans could still come up big. They have seven points on the board. That's why I love, I, I really think in that first overtime situation, you score first, I, I fake and go for two. You're going to catch them a little bit off guard because they think you're just going to get seven and put the pressure on them. But if you come up and get the two-point conversion, then that puts it in a whole other perspective. But, of course, you always look the other side of the coin, too. <laughs> if you come up empty and only six points, then all they need to do here is convert. Well, in order for a team to beat you, obviously, if you're up by seven, they'd have to score a touchdown and then come up with a two-point conversion. And the way the Thornton defense has played here in the second half, you would expect them to be able to keep Marshwood off the board. The corners, of course, on the curl and the protection for the extra points try is number 19 is uh, Loop Hallway. And on the other side, it's Hanscom, both receivers. So you have to be careful of that. 
High snap a little bit, gets it down, kick up, wobbling, and no good. It's over. The Trojans have won. JT Simons stubbed his foot, put it up in the air, and it just hooked off to the right side, and the Trojans come up in a very, very peculiar fashion, winning overtime. But again, there it is. The pressure is on the kicker, and he has to perform. After you got the seven, the pressure is on, and you got to feel for Marshwood. As a team, they played very well here today, earning a lot of respect back, playing Thorn Academy very, very tough, and you got to feel for JT Simons. The 5'8", senior kicker, outstanding kicker, good leg, and just that time didn't get the ball. When you look at the mechanics of the two kicks here in overtime, trip, nice and relaxed, accelerating, punching through the ball, a nice step. If you looked at the Marshwood kicker right there, he did look very stiff in approaching that ball, almost too cautious. You have to feel for him, as you said, but you can't change your mechanics in the big play, and Thornton Academy comes up with a great second half, gets it done in overtime, and they improve their record now to three and one. And next week, back home to play the Sanford Redskins, and let's tell all our viewers and Thornton Academy grads, a big day planned at Thornton Academy next Saturday, opening up of the new building, and the Trojans will have a, a lot of things going on Friday night and Saturday. A lot of ceremonies, a chance to look at the new building, some performances in the uh, new Performing Arts Center. And it should be a great afternoon and day for uh, football and, of course, getting back with all the former alumni. They'll be there on hand in a, a spaghetti supper on Saturday night. That the, the proceeds go to a charity fund. I'm, I'm just trying to do this off memory. I don't have the program with me, but I want to remind all you folks, next weekend, please get a chance if you're former Thorn Academy grad, or even if you're not, and you're interested in what the Thorn Academy Alumni Association has done, and of course this new building, Thorn Academy has done a great job, and they got a whole weekend planned of great activity, and of course it all caps off Saturday afternoon as the Golden Trojans will host the Sanford Redskins, and the Redskins come in two and two, and no slouch in Western A this season. So Thorn Academy gets a huge break here in overtime, and none bigger than the of course, touchdown and play of Nathan Demers, but it's decided on the foot. And the foot of Andrew Tripp is true, and JT Simons comes up a little short. And Thorn Academy prevails in overtime, 14-13. We'll take a break, and we'll come back, of course, with our gutsy players of the game, sponsored by Wagner's Market. We're back with those right after this. Wagner's Market, 188 Lincoln Street, Saco is your neighborly variety store with all your daily needs in one quick stop. The biggest and best subs in town, ice cold beer and soda, pizza, a fine deli selection, mega bucks tickets, and daily specials. All ready for you in seconds for a speedy takeout. If you want to eat in, Wagner's has plenty of space for that too. Wagner's is infamous for its gut bomb sandwich, big enough to bomb any TA opponent or to serve to the entire TA football team who's hungry for wins and Wagner's. 188 Lincoln Street, Saco, sponsor of the gutsy player of the game. Welcome back to Rod Watton Field in Elliott J. Harper along with Mark Paquette. The Golden Trojans coming out very golden here this afternoon in overtime. They did it the hard way, but they win 14-13. And you got a feel for the field goal kicker of Marshwood, J.T. Simons. A tough job, but talking to Coach John Moore and afterwards, he said they put the pressure on the right side to come after him so he would try to push it a little bit left away from the pressure and the wind, of course, blowing across the field that way. And it seemed to work for Thornton Academy because Simons put it up in the air, shanked it a little bit, sent it that way, the wind knocked it, and the Trojans come away with a big victory here today. And you have to wonder how much that timeout played into this factor of him missing that extra point. Extra minute, minute and a half to think about the big kick, think about the win, and everything it had on the line for the game. And how about Andrew, Tri Andrew Tripp, excuse me, coming up, drilling his kick very smooth through the ball, looked great, has done that all year for the Trojans. Oh, that's a big factor. And talking, of course, to some play, you know, both former soccer players, Simons and Tripp, but Coach Moore is saying Andrew Tripp is no longer a soccer player. He's a football player. He's got it in the heart, and he's done it on the field. So big difference there for Thorn Academy. They come away with a victory. And you look at this game, I mean, just a tremendous performance. And you look at the two halves. Thorn Academy played OK in that first half, but dominated in that huge, long drive by Marshwood. And then the second half, the defense came in, sucked it up. They said they didn't do anything different defensively, Thorn Academy. They just, the kids did it. They performed. They sucked it up. They came harder. They got more aggressive. They stood up. And, you know, talking with Chris Mercier, our defensive gutsy player of the game today, he said, you know, what can you say about that line? He goes, they were standing people up, hitting them hard, and we were coming in, cleaning them up, and a big difference in the second half. Well, actually, they did do something different in the second half, and that is they controlled the line of scrimmage. The first half, Marsh would really wore down Thornton Academy up front, 
had their way with them. And we were a little concerned going into the second half, feeling the wear down factor is going to start the show. But give credit to Thornton Academy up front. They showed a five and six man front. They really neutralized the line of scrimmage and did a tremendous job defensively in the second half. And the offensive line, again, outstanding. Durantso throws the ball much better today. He really executed the offense well. A couple of penalties against the Trojans really hurt them in that second half. They could have easily won this one 21-7 in the second half. But again, some miscues and some tough calls at some tough times. But the Trojans offensive line, again, outstanding. The defensive line, superb. And talking to defensive coordinator John Moore, he said, who do you give it to defensively as your gutsy player of the game? He said, give it to them all. They just all played so well. And it's just amazing what that defense did in the second half. It was pretty tough to say one player had the whole scheme when you shut a team out completely in the second half. And that's exactly what they did. They really shut players out. You saw in the first half them substituting, using that depth, and they had fresher players in the second half. And as I said during the broadcast, what you actually saw was Marshwood being worn down in the second half. Yeah, it was the difference. And again, it is our job, though, to pick a gutsy player of the game, so we have to do it. And we decided to go with, as I tipped off a little bit earlier, Chris Mercier. He goes both ways, had an outstanding game offensively, in on some key tackles defensively, and, of course, great coverage provided by Mercier. He's a defensive gutsy player of the game. And Chris, you know every week is going to come to play on both sides of the ball. What he gives you with his quickness as a corner, you can afford to single up coverage. Most receivers in the league, because he's going to be able to be a lot quicker than they are getting to the ball. Of course, offensively, he gets it done, too. But a fine job this afternoon by Chris on the defense. And offensively, really a no-brainer, even though we had some great performances by the offensive line and by Chris Duranso, you got to go with Nathan Demers. The junior steps up in a huge way here, filling for Ryan True, and just brilliant running. He cuts so quick. He's so fast to the outside, and what a weapon. And now Ryan True, the senior, is going to say, wow, I might have to start sharing some time with this young man because he is so quick and so good. Well, you know, Jay, I've mentioned this kid to you oftentimes this year. He is one of my favorite players. Not that I don't like him all, but just his style. He's small. He's quick, but he's aggressive. You saw on a couple of runs this afternoon, he lowered his shoulder, popped the pads right into the would-be tacklers, and certainly doesn't run like a kid that goes about five foot six. He had to really step up today, filling some big shoes, trying to fill the spot of Ryan True. He came up big, and he certainly deserves our offensive gutsy player of the game. Thorn Academy getting a little lucky in overtime on the missed PAT attempt. They do move to 3-1, and one, and next week it's Sanford home. The Redskins, very good. They only lost by 14 to South Portland last night, and, of course, the big win the week before against Marshwood right here on their field. So the Trojans, I think, will be ready for that one, remembering last season's loss. I think they will remember that loss. And now going into the second half of the season, we felt that the offensive line would need a little time to gel they have but now I think what they need to do is, is start to execute and stay away from those costly penalties because really without a few of those motion penalties this afternoon who knows they could have put some big points up on the board big win for Thorne Academy today they win 14 13 we'll take a break and we'll come back with our gutsy players of the game Chris Mercies and Nathan Demers joins us right after this Nothing's easier. It's the look you've been looking for. Nothing's easier. It's the best pain in the business. Nothing's easier than easy elegance. Electric colors, brighter whites. Indoors, Easy Elegance Paints makes it easy to brighten a home, while American Classic exterior paints make a house a home. Nothing's easier than easy elegance. Welcome back to Rod Watton Field in Elliott. Jay Harper being joined by our gutsy players of the game, Chris Mercier and Nathan Demers. And Chris, just a tremendous game today, talking to you just moments ago. You're saying how good it felt to be in a close game and come out the victors. Yeah, and especially against a quality team like Marshwood. Um, we gotta, we got to keep doing what we're doing and go against uh, Sanford next week and do the same thing. Now, what about that extra point attempt? Of course, you score first, you get the PAT from trip, you put all the pressure on Marshwood, but they come right back in two plays and score, but then you put the pressure on their kicker. Great play right there. It must have felt awful good to see that go wide. Oh, yeah. Coach wanted me to go block it. I couldn't get there in time, so I just stood there watching it, and it just started drifting, and, like, tears came to my eyes, and it felt great. It's been a while since you remember Thorne Academy getting a break like that, huh? Yeah, yeah. It's, off the top of my head, I can't think of one. Nathan, going over to you, a tremendous performance today. You step in for Ryan True. He's sick under the weather. You get the ball a lot, and you found that corner time after time getting outside and making some huge runs for Thorne Academy, and none bigger than in overtime, that first play. We called it up in the booth. We wanted to see the ball go to your hands, and again, you bounced it outside, but this time you got the corner and found pay dirt. Yeah, um, I, Chris threw the ball to me. I saw Tommy had a good block. I cut it out. The guy was a little close to me, but I decided I had to cut it up, and I had to get into that end zone because we needed that score. 
How does it feel as a junior now stepping up and playing with the likes of Mercier and True and starting to share the limelight? Of course, back there returning punts with him. You guys are a great tandem back there. It must feel awful good. Oh, it's great. Um, I think we've really bonded together really well, and we work and we help each other. We complement each other, and we, do, we work well together. Now, do you think next week, of course, with your outstanding performance here, you'll see a lot more time share the duty with Ryan True? I hope so, yeah. I'd like to get in there a little more, show a little more of what I can do. All right, great performance today. Nathan Demers, Chris, one final question. Next week against Sanford. It's not really homecoming, but it's a big day with all the alumni on board opening up the new building, and you feel like you owe them a little bit. Yeah, it's payback time. I mean, last, last year, was, that was so embarrassing. Every, every time I see somebody, they're always like, you guys are the guys that lost to Sanford. And I, we just want to redeem ourselves. And certainly you were the one that pulled that one out, it seemed, for Thornton Academy with that tremendous punt return and a great performance here. Then to lose in that style, you're certainly looking forward to next Saturday. Oh, definitely. I, mean, I, I want to have the same type of game that I had last year. And only this year we got so many more weapons that we can use. I mean, True, Duranto is starting to throw the ball good. Uh, Thompson is running the ball real hard. Our line has done a great job. I and mean, Travis Roy and Jim Bufar have done a good job with the uh, underclassmen, getting them ready and getting them pumped up. And, I can't say enough about him. Great performance here this afternoon. Thorne Academy wins in overtime, 14-13. For my entire staff and my guests here, Chris Mercy and Nathan Demers, Tony Ryan, Dennis Avery, and Mark Paquette. I'm Jay Harper saying so long. Trojans back home next week versus Sanford. Pitching formation, here it is. The pitch, again, Demers bounces outside. He's got room, cuts inside. Guess what? Called it, did it, done it, up six. Touchdown. Touchdown. We've been looking for that play, Jay. Demers to the outside, on the strong side. He gets the block from the tight end, pushing that defensive end inside. And Demers with that speed to the outside, diving into the end zone.